Hey guys, time to get in on the action for the biggest moments in basketball with Prize Picks, America's number one fantasy sports app. Just select two or more players, pick more or less on their projections, place your entry, and win up to 100 times your money. Right now, Prize Picks will match your first deposit of up to $100. Just download the Prize Picks app and use the code GET100. That's code GET100 on Prize Picks for a first deposit match of up to $100. Prize Picks, pick more, pick less. It's that easy. Ever tried reading while jogging, cooking, or even juggling flaming torches? Yeah, doesn't end well. But with Audiobooks.com, you can conquer books without the circus act. Dive into over 450,000 titles, including more than 10,000 free ones. Get hooked on a bestseller, find your next obsession, or finally read that classic you've been avoiding since high school. And here's the inside scoop. Sign up today for a free 30-day trial and snag your first three audiobooks on the house. Sign up for your free trial at audiobooks.com slash podcast free today. That's audiobooks.com slash podcast F-R-E-E. You know, everybody's got a to-do list. Drop off the dry cleaning, pick up some milk. Here's an idea. Let's add save hundreds of dollars on car insurance. And the good thing is you don't have to drop off or pick up anything. All you have to do is go to geico.com, and in 15 minutes, you could be saving 15% or more on car insurance. Extra money in your pocket. It just may be the most rewarding to-do you do today. Now, Podcast One brings you Spike's Car Radio. A downloadable Cars and Coffee, hosted by writer, comedian, and automotive enthusiast, Spike Ferriston. Now, here's Spike. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Spike's Car Radio. How are you today? We have a terrific show for you. A little bit of a different format. We've got someone sitting in with us, someone uh, a lot cuter than Zuckerman, a lot more knowledgeable than Zuckerman. Uh, Her name is Heather Storm, and her show is Garage Squad, and it's on Velocity channel correct That's right did yes. i get it all right yes you got it all right and you have uh, season- wednesday nights what season are you on now we're or- at season five right now season wow. five we're a couple episodes in i mean it goes by really quick what night what night are you <laughs> wednesday on? nights nine wednesday o'clock nights. wow that's and, huge. Season yeah. five. Congratulations. Yeah. And we're one hour. Thank you. Yeah, we're really excited about it. We're we gonna think it's dig our best in, season. We're going to dig into her best season ever, her new Ford Mustang. Um, but I think for the next hour, I'd like to just cover a lot of territory we haven't covered in the last few shows. We've, we've been making shows at breakneck speed. We've had uh, questions and questions. You know, just this morning, Zuckerman and I asked for questions for listeners. And within a couple hours, I had 150 questions. <laughs> and... And I think more important than that, there have been big stories happening, uh, some of which we've talked about on the show that people want us to follow up on. Um, One that we can get by really quickly, which is the story of the John Cena uh, Ford GT, right? Which which we, one of our fans listening said he was pretty sure that Tom Cruise bought that car. That now turns out to be completely false. Completely (laughs) false. So don't believe what people tell you. Here's the It was not not Tom Cruise. It was in a farmer's garage in Turlock, (laughs) California. It was in Chino. It was in Chino, right. Right. It was right around the block. We didn't even know it. So so much for our sources there. And and what did the car bring at auction up in Monterey? I don't know the answer to that. It, It made some money. So there you go. So that little mystery is solved. But now, in the meantime... We have a better one. We... Have a better one. And Heather, if you have not heard about this, get ready to have your world rocked. So here it is on the drive. Now, this is a story that you and I had heard about ahead of time from our various sources. Before the news, before our sources. And we did not talk about it on the podcast for fear of litigation. But now, Mm. I'm going to read it right from the Drive's website, drive.com. A VP, vice president, the largest Porsche dealer in America, just vanished with $2.5 million in buyer deposits. Now, every... Yay. what, What just happened with the lights in here? What just switched? Oh, you turned those off? No. Not, <laughs> no, really, no, not in the middle of the not show. Not when you no, have OCD and ADD. You can't do that. <laughs> I really liked it. Yeah, everything just changed. Yeah, that's better. Now I can keep an eye on you. Will's not here today, so we, we've got uh, our friend. It's Peter, right? Steve. Peter, you're dealing with Rain Man over here. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's turning lights off in the middle of the podcast. Totally distracted, oh, yes. Yeah. Anyway, 
Every, I, I would say 50, 60 percent of our fans sent us this story as if we didn't know about it. And I think most importantly, Heather, you might not know this about Paul. He's a, an attorney. Yes. He's a personal injury law. I do, do remember, remember that? that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Schusler. So I think everybody would like some perspective on the story of this man. And Zuckerman, I think you, you've known the story for a while. So why don't you set up the story and what happened and uh, give us your point of view on it? Well, the story is very simple. There was a salesman, a vice president of sales at Champion Porsche, and he decided he was going to open up a, a, a little business called Champion Autosport. And the purpose of Champion Autosport was to divert orders for cars that were unobtainable uh, into wow. his pocket. Yeah, it's really good. Okay, and a question. I, I'm just going to keep asking you questions. Champion Motorsports is, where are they? Well, Champion is in Florida. It's in Pompano, They're, Florida. Okay, so so he set up a second company that he called... Right. Champion Auto Sports, <laughs> <Okay>. right? Close, <laughs> but not quite. Do you think, did it, was it an LLC? Did he actually file paperwork? Or he yes, just said, hey, here's my new company. Well, you need to have the paperwork to open the bank account. It's okay. not that hard to get paperwork, okay. right? So, There's a lot of champions out so there. So then he gets folks like us calling in going, hey, I, I've been turned down for GT3. Right. Can you help me? Oh. And, and by the way, there were some shills out there. We don't know if the shills are involved or not. By a shill, I mean people who are directing buyers to him. There was, there on Rensport and other, at other sites, there was an Atlantis Motor Group, AMG. And this AMG was always advertising that he could get all the specialty cars. Now, it would cost. You're going to have to pay money, but he could get them. Right. Okay. So okay. customers go to one uh, company and then they divert him right. to the other and say, so, "Well, we can help you out." Right. And is it so, a phone call? Is it an email? Do they sit down with this guy? Is, oh, so so we we have to Sukrali, which is the salesman's name. Right. You have to give him a lot of credit. He had phony documents. And that's that's what I love about Con Man because he makes it look real. Phony documents for the cars. Uh, uh, yeah, is Heather. Look, phony, there he is. That's yeah, phony. The guy. Oh yeah. Okay. Phony. He, he looks, looks like, like a, a thief. A yeah. Panamanian yeah. strong man. Yeah, so <laughs> kind. So he's he would have these. Phony purchase contracts, and he would get you to sign them. They looked all official. He would take your money. In fact, with one guy, he took. He said, "I can get you the car at sticker if you pay for it now." And oh, so he wow. got full boat from the guy up front. This what is the guy. Now, what, yeah, what was the car that he said? It he... was a paint to sample uh, GT3 Touring, and uh, or maybe an RS, and then. It first started out as just a regular paint, and then Socrali called the client and said, you know, if you pay some extra money, we can get you paint to <laughs> Oh, <sample."> wow. This <laughs> yeah. guy's good, He's huh? good. So it turned out to be a few hundred thousand dollars. That's what and, I was going to ask. So and, a, couple yeah. gra- a couple hundred thousand up front. Right. He, okay. And some other guys were just deposits, 50 grand. Some other guys were 100 grand. And then eventually, when, oh, it, when it, the account fills up. Well, but here's – and Socrali's smart because he is sending his customers – phony updates from Porsche, wow. the factory. So they are getting, they're learning about their baby, you know, what process <clears throat> it's in, where it's at, and this oh. is keeping everybody cool so that they're not calling up the dealership and complaining, like, "Why? where's our car? We don't have any information. So he like really- the updates we get. Yes. And those are just texts. <laughs> right. Hey, hey, it's on the boat. It's on the boat. It's, 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 it's going to be here boat. in a week. Right. Yeah, if it makes on, it through customs. It's, it's, the boat's six months. It's the, it's the Santa Maria. It's, it's a That's sailboat. That's so smart, It's a though. caravel. It keeps and, you excited the whole time. You're right. like, ooh, my car's getting ready. Right. Okay. And, then, and then eventually- one guy doesn't get the car he paid full money for. A GT3 and, or a GT3 RS, Yeah, paint right? a sample, and he starts calling the dealership. He says, I can't find Sue Crowley. Where is that guy? And they, they're like, uh, he hasn't worked here in a while. Why are you calling? Mm. And they they want to know, why are you calling? Oh, and then he keeps calling back, and eventually they tell him, you've got to call our legal department. And the legal department says... You know, he was defrauding you guys, and we have nothing to do with it. We don't know what he was doing, and it's really a shame. You can work with our lawyers, but we're not on the hook for this. Wow. Now, here's a little background. So Crowley had already done this once before at Champion. That doesn't surprise me. Yeah, so several years ago. So while Champ- Wait, he did it at the same dealership? Yes. You know that at- for a fact. Oh, absolutely. It's already in the, it's in the legal documents. It's in the legal pleadings that Champion, which is now saying, we don't know nothing, uh, it turns out they were sued. So Crowley was sued, and so was Champion mm. several years ago for $300,000 that went missing. 
And then that's when they canned him and he wasn't working Maybe not. Anymore. No, he continued to work there. So wait. So now they're reporting $2.5 million I think plus more. in deposits. Because I heard through my sources that it was four to five. And my sources Was told, any of this money Tom Cruise's? <laughs> we could only hope. <laughs> through your sources. <laughs> we could only hope. But he's got enough. So you heard it was four or five mil. Yes. So that's enough for him to disappear to some little country. Well, you, apparently if you, read the, if you read the newscast, our friend Sue Crowley had money problems. He had spending problems. Maybe he was a degenerate gambler, a drug addict. Who knows? How long did it we take don't him know to any accumulate of that, sure, that $2.5 Probably million? Probably within a year. In about a he year. Did, right. He did really He was industrious. I give him credit. He, yeah. was, he was like a squirrel with lots of acorns. He was planting those under the ground. You secretly admire this guy, don't you, Zuckerman? I always admire a thief <laughs> in a certain way. I have a fascination with the thieving mind that allows the thief to sleep at night, to do this, to get through the day without falling apart. Without <laughs> remember, remember Edgar Allan Poe and the Telltale Heart. It's under the t- yes, floorboards. Yes, of course. Yeah, this I, guy I'm not sure I get that. Well, I feel bad for these guys who wanted this car. You okay, know, who had the money and their money's taken. So, questions for you, lawyer guy. Uh, championship Porsche. Are they on the hook for this? Yeah, they're on the hook. They're fucked. They, <clears throat> they are? are. The legal, the legal, the legal diagnosis is they're fucked. How if they didn't know any? If they didn't know he was because doing it, because you're going to find out that they know. And there's so see, you're so so if he's on the payroll. They're, they're if on the he's hook. on the payroll, they have sloppy sales techniques. They have a, there's something about the way they've carried on their business that allows customers to perceive that this is a standard and order, ordinary way of doing business. Moreover, mm-hmm. he's done this before. Moreover, he didn't get fired because he was very close to the then owner of Champion, who in July drowned. And we don't know why. Okay, the plot and, thickens. Right. Oh my God, he drowned. <laughs> drowned in water, in the water. The beach house. In the water. I know, like in his boat. In, in a boating. In a boating. Oh no, not We've the boating got, accident. This is a very special episode of Garage Squad. <laughs> We're going to put on our detective hats. <laughs> yes. And, and get to the bottom of this. Wouldn't this be a good episode of your show? Yeah. And both of them. But is... what if he's not being paid? Let's say you know. Right. And again, I, I haven't read this document that you seem to have read. But let's say that he did this before, and he wasn't at the time employed and wasn't doing deals okay. and he right. just kind of opened up his own shop then he's not then mm-hmm. champion my not feeling trouble. is going to be this having litigated thousands of cases mm-hmm. a guy like Sacrelli cannot get away with this without something some knowledge on the part of champion people have to be calling there has to be something and there's a backstory mm. the fact that he got away with it once before and stayed in the company tells me that there were machinations and there were things that were happening between people inside and outside mm. champion to make this happen do you want to represent these guys oh i'd get a fortune this would be <laughs> this would be this would be uh, uh, you were uh, the perfect guy to do it I would, like a you, bloodhound i i'm like a pig that can smell Ruffles. There's money there. There is money and there's cars. What so, about uh, this? Isn't going to uh, connect back to the factory? Not a factory is going to save the champion. Basically, you want to keep your dealership, you better make good. What is it? You know. What about this play, Zuckerman? We let champion go down, and then we buy championship Porsche. There we you get go. a dealership. Now you're thinking, right? <laughs> now, <laughs> now, now. How about you crush them, and then we Fun. then walk in and go. Now that you're crushed, what's the number? Well. And then Some we have a dealership. Local, we, think of what we could do with that. We call it Morris Solomon's. Morris Solomon's Porsche dealership. Conveyor, fine Porsche automobiles. Real we ones. Would immediately, not real, ones. real Porsches. <laughs> we would immediately There's only one criteria. <laughs> they're they're real. Real Porsches that you buy. And we could start a feud, a fake feud with C.J. Wilson up in Fresno. Yes. This would be great. Oh, wow. Trumpian. Yeah. Yeah, but we would just be promoting each other on different coasts at the same time. Oh, you know actually, that's where this is headed, right? Yeah, it's more like Eminem and, and Machine Gun Kelly. Yeah. The, yes, the fake, the fake quarrel to boost sales. I would love to live in Florida. I think that would be great. I'd be happy really? to move down there. You I want feel to like, at home. You want to become like one of those guys, like a zombie walking along the freeway without shoes, <laughs> <laughs> holding I a barbecue. Said, I feel at home. <laughs> he said he's, he's smiling pretty big. Are you from there? Where are you from? From Florida? Yeah. No, from Philadelphia, originally. Oh. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, well. Brotherly love. East Coast. Scrapple. (laughs) So what are we going to see happen next here, Zuckerman, in your opinion? Well, there's already lawsuits. The lawsuits are already flying. The lawsuits are flying. There's big insurance on Champion. Champions, they can make good on $5 million. They can do that, but it's going to be the, the punitive damages, all of the other aspects. But it's going to be, it's a nice. Do they have insurance that will pay that? Most likely. The, the, the insurance company will first try to say that we're not responsible for the criminal acts. Right. 
However, eventually they will be pulled into it and they will be forced to pay. Everyone will be forced to pay. <laughs> Look at him smiling. <laughs> you love crushing insurance companies, don't yes. you? Yes. And, and, and you've taught me you've taught me really well that to never listen to the person who calls you from the insurance company. Never. To be very, very skeptical and suspicious of them and to, for you to tell them the way it's going to be handled. Which I just dealt with it with my wife uh, smat, it cracked her windshield on her BMW and the nonsense that they tried to pull off. Right. Sending over their little safe light yeah. truck. It's like this. I'm going to take out this wad of money and I'm going to say to you, <laughs> I'm going to say, Miss Storm, <gasps> see, this is your money, but I'm not going to give it to right. you. I'm going to put it back in my pocket because you haven't done the seven things you need to do to get the money that belongs to you. Yeah. See you later. That's Bye. Right. They don't want to give their money up. Right. They okay. never want In fact, that's why I they I said they I'm sending the car to the dealership. Yes, exactly. this is, there's so much tech in that windshield. <laughs> flight, which you bought, is going to throw in some $99 warranty evaporating. You know, it was unbelievable. But thanks to Zuckerman, I held the line. That's the thing. Their investigation is never for you. Right. The investigation yes. is that they can jump right. get out. What can they get out and of? What can they do to trick you? Right. right. And you Zuckerman. said. Right. Yeah. You, got you tell me if I'm wrong here. They always seem to have nice young ladies calling all the time. And then when you push them a little bit, they get really mean. Well, they start really out fast. nice. For the unrepresented people, they usually have special sweet-sounding adjusters to talk to unrepresented right. people. Right. right. And then when the lawyer comes in, they have a bunch of, of other people that you talk to <laughs> that are not nice, not not sweet sounding, but never believe anyone who sounds yeah. sweet. So this is well, good. Look sweet, any of that. Right? The B team cool. comes in, yes. and then they. Yeah. It's true. Don't believe your insurance people who call you just because you pay. And them. that's and that's be back skeptical. To, and back to AMG, the Atlantis Motor Group, and Sicrelli. How is it that you know? Again, the, how do you believe that <clears> one guy has as many cars as he can get? No one else can get the cars, but this one guy can get tons of them. I wonder why nobody ever thought about that. You know. Well, when, when they got the paperwork, the paperwork was for Champion Motorsports, right? It right. was a different, and they didn't notice that? Yeah, I they wonder weren't... what was sent. Once I wire the money, did it's I get there a contract? there in the computer, come... you can see. <clears throat> well, I mean, no one was looking at it. They were just excited. All these people exactly, have money for these expensive cars. Exactly, because everyone wants to believe that, that Christmas right. is coming. They're going to get the train. They're going to get the pony. Anything. <laughs> that, <laughs> and you'll cheers. get the pony? Okay, yes, I'll give yes. you whatever By the money. way, we love you at Renlist. And uh, uh, a member of Renlist made this poster here of the guy and a wanted poster right here. Very <laughs> effective. <laughs> <laughs> took him hours. <laughs> took him <laughs> out, and it made it into all the articles. I applaud you, sir. He looks... I believable. I mean, in his like tie. Like any other and... car salesman. <laughs> he doesn't look like a believable guy. No. no does no. any car salesman look believable? No. No. So, I mean, if they all uh, look the same, then how can you tell? Have... No, it's such a difference. The, the, the factory guys, those guys look believable and legit. When you get down to the dealership, <laughs> forget it. Oh, yeah. That's true. Or That's like true. those Volkswagen. Well, well, we'll do our best to stay on top of this story. Uh, uh, we are as interested as you are. And uh, again, if you're not represented, call Zuckerman up. He's going to No, no, you. no. I don't work in Florida. <laughs> but you know, the guys that can afford to buy. You said you buy, wanted to handle the case. Did I, you not? I, okay, that was speaking like a you fantasy. You just said you wanted to, but you can't. I, I can't. It. By the way, these are the kind <clears> of people that have money to sue. Guys that can afford a hundred thousand over sticker, right? Right. Yeah. right. So it's not actually the smartest deal for him because he has a bunch of people with a lot of money that coming after him. Yeah, they're going to pursue him. Okay, Zuckerman, <clears throat> the slant nose Porsche that you again. Now this is something we've been talking about yeah. all summer. We've heard uh, you from a reliable source. I know who that source is, and he's reliable. He's been very reliable. Yet here we are now, a few weeks before Ren Sport, and we hear nothing. What I put, you, I'm you, putting my money on slant nose. <clears throat> You think it's still going to be unveiled? Yes. Okay. I but if you've heard nothing, because I've heard nothing about this. Do you want me to text? Yeah. Go ahead and text. text. It's <laughs> early enough in the show. Uh, I'm going to text. and we You're going to text. And we can get back to this. All right. And you'll get back to it. We're going to take a quick break. We have to take two breaks today because we've got some uh, commercials. We have a lot of interest in Spike's Car Radio. We'll be right back with Heather Storm and all of your listener yeah. questions answered. Let's talk about Amsoil. You know why I like Amsoil? Because they're a bunch of car people. They're gearheads. They're into all kinds of power sports, and basically they get it. Recently, Amsoil created a guide to increasing horsepower in your vehicle. It has insider tips from some of the best in the business on coaxing more power out of your engine. You can get your copy free at Amsoil.com slash spike. Amsoil.com slash spike. While there, find out more about Amsoil Synthetic Motor Oil too. Like how Amsoil Signature Series Synthetic Motor Oil delivers 75% more engine protection 
against horsepower loss and wear than required by a leading industry standard. Go to amsoil.com slash spike to get your free insider's guide to increasing horsepower. You're listening to Spike's Car Radio. And we're back. That was <laughs> Are so you still quick. texting? Yes, and we could you threw me off. I, I know. You know, when you're recording these, the break isn't a real break. I just say uh, I'm stopping and then I start right back up. Do you Okay. Well, that's fine. We still have plenty of time. What is Heather, the slant nose Heather, in part? the meantime, I'm going to talk to you before <laughs> before we get to these questions. How, tell us about the new season. What do we have to look forward to on this new season of Garage Squad? You know, I think this and is... And by the way, just remind the audience what the premise of the show is. Okay. Yeah. I think this season's going to be really great because um, we're doing bigger builds. We have really great stories. So the whole premise is is that we're like a band of traveling gypsies, but in a van full of tools. <laughs> and then we go to people's house, and we undo the, we unload the van, and we set up shop in their garage, and then we get to work on their car that's not running. The car or truck could be sitting right. for 10, 20, 40 years, you know, with stuff piled all on top of it, just, you know, in the dust. And we come in, and we get all the dust off, get it all cleaned up, and get it running again, most importantly. So it's really about the car but it's also about the owners and the story and why the car's been sitting there for that long. Maybe it was, you know, their their dads who passed away mm-hmm. or, you know, their sons or brothers or, you know, there's a lot of really great stories this time and it's 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 a lot of fun. What and and they don't end up paying for this restoration. They or this do not. Work, or they don't. No, you, I, I you mean, folks just come in. So how do people submit? I'm not in charge of that part, but, but yeah, so they're, they're not. Just yeah, submit they're cars to the producers and mm-hmm. they kind of map out a season. How many episodes do you shoot? We shot tw- uh, 10 episodes this season. Um, we had done 12 before, but 10 episodes this season. But we had over mm. 20,000 submissions worldwide. Wow. That's crazy. Yeah. So, I mean, wow. there's a lot of cars sitting out there in people's garages not running. Yeah, there are. <laughs> <laughs> Some in ours. <laughs> I just heard about a guy <clears throat> who has 100 cars in a field, like 50 cars in, a, in garages, and about 60 motorcycles. He just passed away, and these are all waiting to be turned on by you guys. Wow. I say it's like a junkyard in the field. Ma- basically. Right. <laughs> a border, what are they going to do with that? That's well, a lot I hate the field car story. Okay, yeah. That's so the worst not, story there you, is. You know, uh, what's his name? Hummel, the guy, oh, with, the, the guy yeah. with the petited 356? Yeah. He got that from this guy. Oh. So there uh, are several more like that. So there's right? some, Ooh, there's some interesting. diamonds yes. in the road. Yes, there are. <laughs> Where are these cars? What part? I can't say, but they're in California. Why are the people telling you this? We have to go on a road trip out there. Why are you withholding this from me? I just learned about it. When? And you don't like to talk about this stuff. You don't like to hear about the project. Well, I like this idea. But I do get anxiety just hearing about cars that have been sitting in fields for many, many years. Is it, you're, and, you're anxious about like having to like yeah, because I have to make the... it perfect. I have to oh, make it perfect. Okay. Then once it's perfect, then I won't even like it. It, it... no, <laughs> perfect isn't good enough. I like oh, wow. guy. I like his feed because I get to watch him kind of hang out with this imperfect, beautiful old car. But I know my personality. I can't own anything it like that. Has to be one hundred percent. No, no, not always. I can, I can kind of get used to it. But then one day I'll walk into that hangar and see that car and go, what? What is this? I've got, I've got to <laughs> make this perfect. This? <laughs> Look at that! I rubbed against Humble. it. My white pants have rust on them. I'm going oh. to tell, I'm going to tell his story. But he bought that car for twenty grand. Wow. He got a great deal. You're he, talking to Hummel. No, I know this. You just I know, know this. I know things. Oh, wow. So how many other cars are sitting in that field, did you say? Uh, and are they uh-huh. all Porsches? <laughs> no, the Porsches are in the garages. The field cars are like, ah. you know, field mice. Field, yeah, 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 they are. We've got house cats and field mice. And then there might be the, uh, this motorcycle after motorcycle after motorcycle. We're talking. Is it 60 motorcycles? What kind of motorcycles? Yeah. Everything from Harleys to Ariels to BSAs Ooh. to Triumphs. How many BSAs? Uh, we don't know, but there there are something like there's. We there, don't know. So, are you involved in the sale of these cars and the extraction? <laughs> Maybe the extraction. That, <laughs> I did say we, and that was, and you caught that me. Was very, very good lawyering. <laughs> that was very good lawyering. <laughs> this is good. He's learning from you. Well, wow. but now I want to get Garage Squad involved. I yeah. want them to come there and say, "Oh my God, what do we do? This is like the ultimate. But we're the like, where do we challenge. start? It's and a none sweet of them run. show, isn't it? And they go and they leave. fix cars. This is a whole and... new show. We'll start a new show. Yeah, where you we go just there go and say, "There's nothing we can do." Do you ever for you. do? You know what videos I love? I love uh, the videos, and they're on all the time. And I know it's a little schmaltzy, but I love the video of the dad who had to sell the car because the mom yeah. was sick or for college, schmaltzy. and then the kids grow up and they find that car or a car like. 
like it, and they credit to him, then dad starts bawling, and then I'm watching, I start bawling, I'm like, oh, those are my favorite. Yeah. I mean, do you do stories like that? I do mean, you ever uh, yeah, get into Yeah, absolutely. The- I mean, we had some, we had some cool stories um, this year where one of them, um, one of them, so this is kind of a funny story, but this is where the guy is Scott Studebaker. He's born in 1959. Get a social security bit number later. Um, but he's... Actually, his truck was a Studebaker Scotsman 59. And it was it like, coincidence that he's Scott Studebaker? He, he's Scott Studebaker, <laughs> born in 59. He had a 59 Studebaker Scotsman truck. Like, wow. How do you, you can't make you that go. up. He has to be buried in that. <laughs> <laughs> so that was just like, when, it, when I heard that, I was like, really? So when you guys, <laughs> Why would he have that truck? When I you, guess- that's when you lying. show up to this garage in this new uh, this new guy's ha- with a, with a car, how much about the car do you already have mapped out? Are you just did the producers kind of put you in the situation and say figure it out? How, do, how does There's that? There's a work? lot of figuring it out. I mean, they have already chosen the cars, obviously, right, so they right. know that they're doable in the week that we have to get them done because that's important. I mean, we only have seven days from the time we see the car. Now, sometimes there's a weekend over that, which gives us time to have parts ordered and stuff. But we have to do tear down right away and evaluation day one. Mm-hmm. So we see the car. We get an evaluation of the status of the car and what we're going to need to order ASAP. And then, of course, as we start to go and discover things that are wrong, as we tear apart the engine or, you know, break the suspension down or whatever, um, then we all all of a sudden need to quickly order something else or find something. And speaking of cars and fields, you know, sometimes the mechanics will go out to a junkyard, go out to a field or the call up friends. Okay, he has this old Suburban sitting out here. We'll pull the drive shaft from there. We can get it, you know. So it's a lot of like hurry up and try to find things, you know. We're not we're not making them perfect. You would you would hate our jobs on the car. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing is perfect about it, but it's running again. I mean, it was sitting right. for forty years. Right. Now it's running. I mean, it, we we do the best we can in the time, and we get it to where hey, they're in a lot better position. Sometimes they're still going to have to do some work to the car, you know, to get it more perfect how they want it. You know, maybe we didn't get a headliner done that time, or you know, some of the stuff that we just can't get to. But they're they're going to drive safely. But their drive. I mean, our mo- yes, our most important part is safety. You know, that's why right. I say some of the cosmetic stuff. Okay, you might still right. have to fix a few things, but safety is a number is a priority. Brakes are usually are always done. <laughs> you know. I've got to ask you a question. Does anyone ever? Are they ungrateful? Do you ever have any ungrateful? That's a good question. Um, I, jerks. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> I've never seen. They at least to me, I haven't seen people ungrateful. <clears throat> now, some of the owners are very OCD in particular. Probably like you, Spike, and like they they want to. Uh... <laughs> Wait, I didn't. Say that. I said... <laughs> oh, I heard OCD. That was what you said. Yeah. <laughs> yes, but he is. <laughs> but so they'll stay afterwards, you know, and, and make sure that it gets perfect. You know, this door card is going to go on oh. perfectly, or you know, or you're not going to steal the lighter <clears throat> right? right or the ashtray oh yeah you got to be really particular yeah I, and that's fine hey you know what if it was my car i i'm pretty particular about my car too so i understand you know there, i heard about some of the other shows we won't name which ones but people later they complained and, and said you know was, the, the cars were horrible they didn't do what they said they were pimp my do. ride you know so <laughs> i i think some <laughs> of the things is about, people right? have an expectation like, also and i don't know what you know what it's regarding exactly and perhaps maybe the car isn't perfect or it doesn't run what i think people don't really understand that first of all it's an old car and you can't things are going to constantly go wrong with that car mm-hmm. you know it can run perfectly when we leave and then it breaks something breaks the very next day mm-hmm. too so i mean the, <clears> and it's so hard to tell what you know what it was right what caused okay now right. suddenly this hose is leaking well that that's an right. old hose on there we didn't get to replace that hose okay you know that's understandable she should be running more solomon's you want her to run the dealership? We're going to run her. Okay. Yeah, she, I... yeah, she's going to run We're the dealership. We're not deals. responsible. I like the way she talks. It's good. She's got. A, she's great. <laughs> Nobody's going to sue host. us if she's in charge. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Sunshiny delivery of bad news. Right. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Uh, Luke from Andrew Dryberg in Scotland. Wow. Where's that joint? He's a Porsche guy. Through and through. Have a Carrera 4S amongst other cars. I also have a dog. Well, Well. that's extraneous information. Get to your question, Luke. Here it is. Where do you stand on Cayenne turbos? Should I buy or pass? That's a your question. That's for you to answer. You're the guy that knows those cars. Um, I would pass. I I like them, but I only like uh, these Porsche SUVs if you don't have any other Porsches. I like to jump into Range Rovers and other brands, BMWs, and then make my Porsches special. Hey, it's a beautiful SUV, that's but if it's going to be, if you want something that's a, a car and an SUV at the same time, uh, you could do that. But but ultimately, I think you'll end up comparing it to this your 911. Is, this is one successful Scotsman. 
I don't. I, I don't. I don't know about a lot of Scotsmen there. With he the, is. Yeah. Well, don't believe it. I mean, who knows where this guy lives? I, he's just saying he's from Scotland. Scotland. Sounds good. So, um, I'm <laughs> currently doing a garage remodel from scratch. What's oh. Heather's opinion on the coolest equipment, gadgets, oh. etc. she's seen in normal sized two to three car garages? Oh, why well, is that a normal size two to three? Yeah, yeah. what? Are those? <laughs> <laughs> but I like that idea. Aside from your air compression and your. What what would you throw in your garage? Yeah, well, I mean, I think uh, one of the things that I'm a stickler for, and this is an obvious thing, but a nice organized tool chest. And mm. I mean that because yeah. when you're trying to do stuff, you want to be able to find everything. So I think it, it, the labeling and making sure each drawer has specific things, obviously that's an obvious. Air compression, definitely. <clears throat> um, a good set of jack stands and a jack. Yeah, obviously you need that. Um, and I think having stuff, I, I like, again, I'm an organized individual, so I like having a lot of hooks so you can just mm-hmm. have things set up so you can see them and grab them and that's more of you know just making it really easy to find the tools that you need um so definitely jacks you don't need a lift you can get a lot of stuff done just on air compressor yeah air compressors for sure i would want one of those pneumatic delivery systems they used to have an old an old um, service garage it's like the tube and you put a message in yeah your wife (laughs) have dinner have dinner ready why haven't you put a lift in your hangar suckerman I don't want to lift because those things could fall over. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or something could drop off. But so consider- much work could be done right in that hangar, right? Considering the people that <clears throat> I hang around with, you being one of them, yeah. I just see uh, <laughs> me getting crushed, a car getting crushed. <laughs> right? Why getting do crushed. I want it? Why do I even want do, that? I mean, that does see, happen. Oh, you have right. to be careful. I mean, that's, yes. that is the danger. We, right. we actually worked on a on a... A vehicle this season one of the episodes and the guy actually did have a car fall on him and he he became paralyzed so we worked on his truck yeah it's a terrible story i know it oh is but God. i mean we got his truck up and going for him you know and that that's part yeah, of the who's whole driving thing. it well no we, we fitted it for him oh. so he could drive it yeah yeah because i thought what a, what no. a nasty trick no right? i mean yeah and yes yeah. and he and it was a guy who had an auto shop too so he just, oh the poor he, guy yeah i know oh it's brother just, yeah. So. <clears throat> what is Zuckerman's favorite car at RPM Motorsports? Well, we discussed that, I believe, last week. I think that show aired last week. Yes. And, uh, but as he you did know, ask what I thought about that orange and orange Andiel 3.8. And that's a beautiful color. TT. I don't know about how the car drives, but I like the color. I used to see the word Andale, and I thought, well, I'll avoid that car. <laughs> You know, this again before the modified Porsches really took and off. And remember, my, my like, recollection oh. is one of our friends got a car from them, and it yeah. never ran right. Um, I don't know about that. He says so. Oh, yeah. Ask him Sunday. Okay. Are we even going to be here? <laughs> Maybe. You're not going to believe what we were up to this weekend. What are you up to? It's potentially one of those trips you read about in the newspaper. Two men die in, in I was small aircraft. in a bad way. <laughs> <laughs> if we Zuckerman. die together, I'd be happy. Oh. Yeah, except that our oh. kids are going to be with us. <laughs> You're going into the middle of nowhere? <clears throat> we're flying to Tijuana in a small aircraft. It's not that small. It's not? How oh. small is it? Not small. How, okay. how, Eight how, seats. It's got two propellers. That's pretty small. Two propellers. Yes. Okay. Is it going to have two, is it going to have a pilot co-pilot? Yes. Now it neither will. of you are are flying. No, it, though. no. no. Okay. I would like to I'm, fly for a little I'm while. I'm watching him be terrified. I'm having the time of my life because he's a nervous flyer, <laughs> and I'm really not. not. That is not. a fabrication. So do you take something for your nervous? First of flying? all, I'm not a nervous flyer. That's the first <laughs> thing. What I don't like, and what he's talking about, he's not not very accurate here, and he's a lawyer. I don't like being in the back seat facing a headrest in a uh, small, mm. tiny aircraft. Without, yeah. a, little without a toilet and me saying, all this bottle's <laughs> And sitting next to him while work. he's taking a pee into a bottle. I don't like that. <laughs> that part doesn't sound good. That when was I, fun. But that we figured it part. out. Now I sit in the front seat next to the pilot, and I've got the view of the windshield, and if, I, I love it. I absolutely love so flying. Actually I'm actually just, looking yeah. forward to this. But again, this is kind of I'm in the container again getting shaken up in the shoebox. So you but like I'm looking to, forward to it. have the outside seat on planes normally like if you if you fly? Line, on a jet, you... I could care less. Okay. That doesn't, that doesn't matter. It's, it's only the anything. little Diet Coke can with a propeller on the front. You <laughs> want to see what's Cessna's. going on. If you're going down, you need to be front row. I want control. <laughs> I've got to be well, able to- Well, you don't to... have any control just yeah. sitting there. Well, yeah, as a co-pilot, yeah, in the Cirrus OCD. that we flew in, in the Cirrus. Oh, yeah, you're going to land. Oh, you do? Oh, okay. You're going to be like okay. that guy that stole the plane and did loop-de-loops <laughs> and all that other stuff before No, I've done the flight simulators. I've taken the lessons. Okay. I, just, I, I would I would have a pretty good, I'd say I've had 60% chance of landing that thing yeah, safely. Do you, would the, you trust him? I, I, okay. It would be I, a little rough, it? but I know I how to what. do it, and I've done it on the simulators. Let's put you up there, because I think 6 out of 10, 60% is a pretty good chance. I'll bet you 1000 bucks you can't land. Which one? Any of the planes. Any. <laughs> any, wait, wait. Any. You're Are you going to be in the me? plane, though. Are you no, sure you I'm want watching. to do that? Okay. I'm oh, watching. I could land that serious very easily. Very easily. 
That's just us. throttle he's control. Taking you up on it. That's just throttle control of steering. That's easy. I, I can't wait to when we talk to the pilot on Saturday. We're going to talk about this. When <laughs> You're you say, serious. It's not that hard to land one of those little aircraft. Really? Yeah. Everybody can do it. Not everybody, but it's not that hard. You, but he's done the you can simulation. Drive. No, I've taken flying lessons before. <laughs> I would have an easier time in a Cessna than I would with that little cane handle of a Cirrus. I don't like that. <laughs> I, you know this what, is what I'm... you steer with, Heather. It's like, a, it's like a cane comes out and there's a little L on the end and you're, you're flying that it's way as opposed tailor, to the Cessna. Like a bow. Like this. It's yeah. a tailor. Yeah, yeah. It's a little harder, but I, but I could do it. Absolutely, I could do it. Okay. But well, I don't I'm know. glad to hear this. This is great. Yeah, so you guys You're are like Spico- have fun. Spicoli over here. We can fix it. <laughs> I didn't say it would be smooth. You I said you, no, but I'm I just, could you do say it in you, an emergency you situation. You say that you will live, and I say you're not going to live. And, I just, <laughs> I just, I just, and that's my bet. <laughs> is that all I have to do is live? Yes, yeah, you live, live. You win a thousand bucks from me. <laughs> Who's going to let us do this? I will take you, the plane. Take, <laughs> take the plane. What, you don't see, think that the, uh, the FAA will have anything to say about Go it? Up, when, just, you can take <laughs> off. You can, if you can land, you can take off. Well, what, if, you, if the pilot falls asleep, technically you could land the plane, the fantasy right? Is the Even taking has off a heart would be easy. And he's slumped over in the straps, mm. and you got to throw him out the window. He just happens to <laughs> fall asleep. I'm going to throw him out the window, too. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's like a little car. Those planes are fantastic. I really love those planes. Okay. I'm a fan. So okay. in, 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 in the yeah. twin prop. Uh, I think it's going to be a great time. I think we're going to have a great time. Uh, the minutes. Mexico part of it, the Tijuana part of it, is the now. Scary can you just part. fly in, or I mean, what's what's the, the whole? How does that work at the border there? Well, yeah, they, when you that's fly, what we're going to try. That's to what we're going to find out. <laughs> I've had, I've had a house. Part. I've had a house down there for many years, and you drive down there, but driving back is right. really you suffer. And now with the plane, we're going to see what it's like <laughs> to fly there and fly back. Can right. you believe my wife said yes to this? Yeah, and yeah so take our ten year old. She wants you to crash. What? She did at first say yeah. Go ahead. You can go. And she was smiling. What are you smiling about? She goes, I just hope you make it. I go, and I'm bringing one of the kids. She goes, no, you're not. <laughs> so you're kidnapping. Now you know where you stand. <laughs> then she said, no, he would okay. really enjoy that. She so really is it harder it. to get in or she, is it harder to get back? Well, flying back. she wanted to interview your pilot, by the way. She That's wanted fine. To that makes sense. sense. And I said, absolutely not. What are you going to ask him? Yeah. Are you good at this? <laughs> yeah, lady. Yeah, like, so. Because it seems like it'd be easier to get into Mexico, but coming well, that's back the is whole the trick, point, right? The whole point is that eventually you get a waiver so that you can land in Van Nuys, where they have a little customs wow. office for special people. And, <laughs> and then you breeze through. This time we're going to land in San Diego, which is the port of entry from Mexico. And apparently they have a little office for regular private little planes okay. and so hopefully it's very quick and we get back and it's like a breeze so there's a little layover hopefully. in san diego yeah. and then you fly back right. to and that's that's what the Nice. goal is we're okay. going to dis- and if we discover this is true then it's going to be just like going to wherever yeah let's go to the beach that let's sounds go, nice yeah. yeah this could be good it could, it could be. It, it could, could be. be. It could be. And he's always been afraid. He's always said to me, you're going down there. You're going down there. You're going to get buried with two little straws coming out of your nose to breathe. I <laughs> said, don't call me. Yeah, when they put you in the wow, hole. that sounds pretty And awful. take your GT3. <laughs> and and, and want to ransom. Well, let them take me. Well, they'll give me back. They they'll won't g- want me. They won't. The last time they'll I was uh, and there, and it was quite, <laughs> quite some time ago, and I was driving through on my way to Rosarito or somewhere, I remember being traffic and looking in an alley, and I saw a guy shot and killed. <laughs> so no. that's my really? that's my little memory of Tijuana. But at least you have a memory. <laughs> you saw him shot, or he was already shot? He was. I saw a guy put a gun to another guy oh. and shoot him. Oh, yeah. It it. might have been on a bus. It's a, it's a foggy it's recollection, but that piece of it, I remember just like, what did I just see and 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 that's my last it's memorable. memory. And now Tijuana. he's going to Mexico again. So we're going this... to no, we're going right to Tijuana. We're, uh, yeah. <laughs> so right where it happened. So this <clears> could <throat> be a bit of a flashback scenario. You better watch him. Because... Just say goodbye. <laughs> say goodbye. Hold on, time to pay the bills. Think of all the weird things found in cars. I'm not talking about your garden variety petrified French fries or melted crayons. I'm talking about live snakes, bizarre trinkets, the kind of stuff that just makes you wonder about folks. Another thing you're going to wonder about, but in a good way, are continental belts. 
Bet you didn't know there are OE and tens of millions of Chryslers and Dodge, Ford, and GM vehicles that roll off the assembly line. There are also OE on the majority of BMWs and VWs. Now Continental is launching the aftermarket multi-V belt with the OE pedigree. It's their OE technology series. Belts that are fanatically engineered for perfect fit form and function. And Continental has OE technology series multi-V belts for 98% of the vehicles on the road in the U.S. and Canada. Hey, you get enough surprises working on cars and trucks. A belt should not be one of them. Go to Continental OE Technology Series Multi V Belt, the belt with the OE pedigree. To get the full story, visit OE Technology Series dot com. All right. Um, somebody wants to know what our perfect day is. Current time, not fantasy world uh, base. So here are the here's the criteria. Okay. You can go first, Heather. What car are you driving? What road are you on? Who oh, are you hi. with? What watch do you have on? Oh, That's my. for me. And what cigar do you have lit? Heather? <laughs> <laughs> Just do the car. I know you've got that new Mustang, right? I do. I, I, what you is know, that, a 63? It's a 65. 65. 65 Mustang, luxury interior. It's got the pony blue and white. So yes. I'm going to go with cruising my Mustang right now just because it's it's just so fun. Um, you know, I haven't gotten a chance yet, but I think that I'll take her up to along the 101 up the coastline. Um, that would be really nice. North That's of Santa nice Barbara. Drive. We just did that drive. Yeah, yeah. It's beautiful. So I think, you know, you got <clears throat> and the who ocean right there. They want to know who you're with. Oh, oh gosh. We'll put some nice music to this, Yeah, too. we'll definitely put some right? nice music. Well, I, I like to listen to some good 70s rock when I'm in my yeah. Mustang. Like, that's that's what – that brings me back, you know. I just – I get cruising. Time machine Windows experience. down. Yeah, time machine. I like that. I, I think I'm solo, just cruising. Yes, really? Yeah. Nobody. Yeah, just that's music bad blaring. news for the boyfriend. Can hear the <laughs> – <laughs> can hear the – <laughs> you can hear the sound of my car. No one's yapping. <laughs> yeah, that is true. Having somebody else in the car. It's a little distracting. Like, there is something about just being alone cruising in your car on a nice r- road. Yeah. I don't know. Zuckerman, what do you car? Which car? First. Tonight, if it was tonight, yes. on a beautiful night like tonight, yes. it would have to be either a 58 Spice or a 300 Ooh. SL Rose. Just wow. something with a top down. Something yeah. that is the California <clears throat> dream. And then we get some, and then you know my favorite thing is to just sit around somewhere mocking people. If we could just, if we could just, <laughs> what get, road are you on? Yeah. Though? PCH, of course. You can the mock anyone PCH, anywhere yes. around here. Yes. So. Yeah. And you're by yourself, I'm guessing. Yeah, but then we, I, I run into my friends, and we sit around, and we we mock and and tease. That's, there you uh, go. And then and no cigars. You, Do you have a watch on? I only wear one watch. I'm not like him. Um, I don't have. I just put one on, and that's it. And that's what I wear. It would be the Rolex, but uh, and no cigars. The Daytona, yeah, and no cigars. I don't really. Ha- I don't have a watch. <clears throat> Why not? Huh? Just never been. A, I've never really. You would be perfect. Been... She, a gold Datejust would be perfect. I just haven't on found her. the right watch. I guess I haven't really looked for one. Just hasn't hmm. been a thing. I know it's a whole hmm. other world. Like this, now, it's a wait, dangerous no, thing. No, it's like is, anything. You, you get into now, it, and for it's you, like, for you, for <laughs> you, you need to get a guy to give you one. Right. This is a and then this that's is a meaningful. challenge. Well, no, you're, you're no. In, it doesn't have to be meaningful to oh, you. <laughs> to him, you're in the yeah. automotive. But for the guy to give you a watch, that's pretty. You know. Well, that's his problem. <laughs> I think you could. You you need something that's kind of guyish automotive. I think you could get rid of get get. You know, like the watch. Daytona, the old, one yeah. of the old Daytonas, one of the old smaller oh, ones okay. would be what you'd be into. Right. Something just a little dudish because you're in the car world. Right. Like a nice right. old. But not too much because I got a tiny wrist. Right. So, Doesn't matter. You know, a little 5513 anything. Daytona, 5512, I mean, uh, Submariner. Rain Man. 5513, any of those little one, non datey oh. ones. Do you know what he's talking about? No, we need to pull it up. These are reference numbers yeah. for the kind of watch, but he gives out these numbers like, you know. I know, he's like 551. The 5512 is what Steve McQueen wore. and that's what I would put you into. And what would I drive? I don't know. I don't know. I what can, would you? On a, on a great drive, there are so many cars. I mean, any pick car. Pick one that, today, <clears throat> tonight. you got to pick tonight. Real time. But why tonight? I want to, it would be a daytime drive. It okay. would be a morning pick Saturday, drive. Saturday, a beautiful Saturday morning. And I agree with you. The PCH and an open PCH road in an open top car, like a Speedster. But that could be an 89 Speedster. It could be a 58 Speedster. It could be something without the top and old would be fantastic. And I like to look over at the ocean. I like a nice, mm-hmm. calm ocean. And you like your music. I'm with you I on do, that. I do throw the Beatles on or something yeah. that's age-specific to the car. You know, it depends. Like when we're Time, in the 87, yeah. I, you know, I just bought all those cassettes, tapes from uh, <laughs> nice. eBay. So I picked something from that pile. <laughs> Scratchy used cassettes. I love that sound. I would never smoke a cigar in the car. 
<laughs> I would pick an old watch, though. For a drive like that, I'm wearing one of the old watches, one of the old Hoyers, one of the old Rolexes, whatever, whatever's got the right date on it when I open up the <laughs> box so I don't have to fix the date. And uh, the cigar is always after. It's at the end of the day. And it's yeah. always a, a, a Hoyo, like a number two or a number, number one, big fat one. Disgusting. And then I sit and uh, I Asphyxiate look at everybody else's everybody. Instagram posts about their cars, and then I look for cars and... I really don't Fantastic. understand I love it. what is good about a cigar. Uh, it's a nicotine addiction that your wife doesn't bother you about. Mm. <laughs> that's really, that's the first it, thing. It's not like a cigarette. More right. often than not, the people around you will say, I really like that smell. Oof. But with a cigarette, oh. they say. How do you feel about the it? The next Kevin? day it doesn't smell so good in your hair, I'll tell you that. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> you're hanging out in a cigar room and then you're wow. like, oh my God, I stink. There's, right. there's so many reasons to smoke cigars. You know, we've, we've talked so about this. No, but you, you always, you, if you're sitting with a bunch of guys or women smoking cigars, everybody, you, you always, you're always right when you have that cigar. You go, let me tell you something. <laughs> Yeah, you take a cigar and you Let me tell you something. And you're always right. No matter what comes next, you're always it right. It looks like you're right. At Very least Seinfeldian, when you... that yeah, bit. Yeah. yeah, well, that, I think, is something he and I have spoken about. It's yeah. a, that's, that's what that's all about. Um, also, it's a classy way to smoke, right? I mean, you have a cigarette, less classy. You have a cigar. It's a very social thing. Right, you're it's, elevated. It's, it's, you're, it's, it's more elevated than cigarettes. You're vaping. Yeah. Right. Vaping is oof. It's not tacky, elevated. Right? It's, no, it's, it's tacky, right? Is it just taking you can play right bocce. There. You can play, play little bocce. games. Bocce. You smoke a cigar. You well, have okay. a nice drink. I'll have a martini. You can have your cigar. Yeah, I'll it's have a nice. A it's a nice way oh, you to relax. Just play bocce because we do that all the time. <laughs> I do play bocce, by the way, and I've been playing since <laughs> I was a child. He's pretty good. Leave me alone. I'm terrible at it, but it gives you something to do because we have nothing to do in life. How are we doing on time here? How many? How long have we been going here in, in this little act? You got you got until six. Oh, we got until six. Well, let's keep going then. Um, we'll do one more, a couple more questions, and then we'll take a break. I don't um, have until six. When well, are you leaving? Five thirty, because I have a dinner at six. So that's like okay. Five. Where are you going to dinner? Well, I was told I was only an hour. Where are you going to dinner? Gracias Madre. Oh well, that's nice. that's two blocks away. I know. You're doing fun. So I'm good. Have you been there? Ah! Have, yeah. Zuckerman, look behind you. Huge <laughs> dog. Some sort of giant They're, dog creature. He is bigger than what you. What in God's name is that? That's is that a St. Bernard, I think, dog. And why is it here? Is it not like the Beethoven dog? <laughs> All right. We've gone off the edge. What? What? What do you got? Okay. Zuckerman, you just, you just got a text. Rensport. What did you learn? Tell us. I, uh, my prediction is confirmed. That... We're going to see that car. We're going to see that car. We're going to see that car. All right. I'm going to rush this show up before Ren Sport. <laughs> so I the, don't – yeah. So what – wh- I, uh, you know, we're, we're, I was sworn to secrecy. About and what? we're talking about this um, – Oh, we've been talking about it all summer. Okay. I guess you're right. And we don't know who you just text. Right? Okay, that's true, too. So we I have no I idea who it. this person yes, is. She's, <laughs> she's, she's I can tell it. you definitively, and this is not a lie, it's not Jerry Seinfeld. This guy, Jerry doesn't even know about this. So. Right, we told him. Huh? We, told, we him. told him. And frankly, he doesn't believe us about it. We <laughs> believe that. So he knows, but I but... hope, I hope he's in for a surprise. You know, Jerry's like a little kid. What he wants to do is surprise us. And he'll say, mm. I heard something. I wish I could do the voice. I heard something, <laughs> but I can't tell you. Can you do it, Spike? I heard something. <laughs> well, I'm not going to tell you guys <laughs> about it. So he likes to dangle the carrot. Yes, of course. <laughs> yes. You know, I have some information that you might be interested in. From the That's highest levels. Good. From the highest level, Spike. <laughs> well, what is it, Jerry? I'd love to tell you, but I've been sworn to secrecy. <laughs> That's what he likes to do. I like how this is coming, becoming Eleanor Roosevelt. Seinfeld is Eleanor it's Roosevelt. It's late in the day. I've been talking a lot today. I've pitched programs. I'm falling asleep. I've already made so many mistakes in this podcast. Well, you know what? Let's keep going until you have to go. Then we'll take a break, and then Zuckerman will, ha- will answer a few more questions after that. Because you don't have to leave for ten minutes. I want to keep. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna, we're gonna ring this ring out. It out. Yeah, and, and you know what? <laughs> People are always asking for us to go longer, and I think really? they're going to enjoy this little conversation yes. we're having with Heather here. Yeah. Every, right? I hope so. So let's you know, just we, relax. Heather, so everyone so calm I stop down. getting criticized. <laughs> you should do calm it. Down. Heather and Matt Farrer. Uh, they'd be nice counterbalance. You've met with. You've uh, done Matt Farrer's podcast, The Smoking Tire. Oh yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, you did. Yeah. They've already met. Yeah. I met him. He was yeah. great. 
Was he okay? Time, did he try to get you high? No, did he, no? he didn't. He didn't. Did he get high in front of you? No, I, no, no he, he didn't. didn't. <laughs> so I right said we before. could have a cocktail before. Yeah, no, he doesn't know. like that. He just likes his vape pen. He had a whole pen. bar there. Yeah, vape, yeah, vape. no, yeah. That's what's going on there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the vaping tire is what I call no. that website. <laughs> I, no, I didn't, I didn't partake in that while I was there. You should. I, I, right. I should have. Yeah. Here we go. OG.Ellie.Belly. That's his Instagram or her Instagram account. So... I totaled my 2007 Prius, and my parents put me in a 2012 Mini Cooper with a manual transmission and a sport mode. For a 17-year-old, I'm kind of living the dream. Tearing up the roads, windows down, listening to Zeppelin. He likes Zeppelin at 17, and I just so happened to be going 82 in a 50 zone and caught a $180 ticket. So my question is, what was your worst speeding ticket? So Amount it has nothing- and speed, I'm guessing. Go ahead. Heather, have you ever gotten um, one of those? Definitely have gotten quite a few speeding tickets. <clears throat> I, I, I don't I haven't gotten any lately, so that's good. Um I don't know I did get pulled over speeding going over ninety in Montana and I, I they didn't have a speed limit at right. the time. Okay. So I thought and I was in high school, I just thought I could go whatever speed limit I wanted. But, you know, apparently it's how fast for the condition of your vehicle that you're driving. <laughs> so if your car is really not meant to go over mm-hmm. ninety I got pulled over because my vehicle was that's, not that's fit That's so unfair. For that. That's a con. It's like they can just trap you after the fact. Well, right. I said, well, but there's no speed limit. Mm-hmm. Right. Right. Do you know how fast you're going? Yeah, somewhere over 90 probably. Yeah, that was a little too fast. There's no speed limit. Right. So I didn't actually right. get a ticket. I got a warning because oh. – I, well, you know, because he, he felt like, okay, I, you know, like I argued my way out of that one a little bit. <laughs> I hear you. I hear you, yeah. Zuckerman. That's not even that fast, I know. In 1983, <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, long, I was in, yes, yeah, four score and 20 years ago. <laughs> I had just graduated high school. Right. Yes. I was, I had my Formula Firebird, 79 James Rockford color. Yes. Uh, and I tried to outrun <clears throat> the coppers <laughs> in, you did? in Scottsdale. That's <laughs> because I thought my car was invincible and fast. And so, so I saw the lights <clears throat> a couple a couple of blocks back, and we had a, a spirited chase <laughs> through through Scottsdale. This and, is fun. And being that it was 1983, the cops were – I made their night, right? It, they were, There's no <laughs> helicopters? They were, no, not then. This they, is a real chase. Smokey and the Bandit. Smokey and the Bandit. Real hicks from – you know, this is 83. Yeah, yeah. You're making life exciting. Right. And so, and so they pull out this kid from New York. This I was such a scumbag. And uh, and they made me sit on the curb and they were, oh, how did? why did you think you could outrun us? Did you re- – we're trained. And, but they were – I gave them the night of their life. They kept me for an hour, and they let me go, which I took for granted at that time that that's what was going to happen. And I look back, and I realize I'm lucky that they didn't take my car, throw me in jail, yeah. beat, the, beat the crap out of me. Yeah. How did you get – how did it end? Like you're, you're, They told me to go home. No, but me. I mean before when they finally caught oh, up with you, so, the actual chase. So we were having the spirited chase, <laughs> and, and I came around a corner. I didn't realize you know, this desert business can come out onto the roadway. And so I right. slid out in the, <laughs> Into in the, the desert. desert. <laughs> and we slid out and did some, and, and they were right on me. Yeah. That's, wow. how it, that's how it ended. And I won't call that a ticket because I didn't get one. Uh, but that was like the worst I've, uh, thing kinda, I ever did. You gave up at that point. You got out that's of the when, car and you're like, okay. Yeah, and then they, and, yeah, but they were cool. They didn't pull guns. They didn't, they wow. didn't, it was none of this militaristic way of approaching a, a traffic stop like now. They were, yeah. they were good about it. They, wow. they were kind of Were you nice to them at least? You weren't rude, right? No, I, I wasn't rude. After and I we was just did a few, I, put them on a wild chase. No, I was like, they're like, why did you do that? And I said, because I'm stupid, which was, <laughs> which was the right answer. That was the right, <laughs> the right answer. answer. And, they, and they laughed. Yeah. Did they think you were inebriated? Or no, and I was. Back but then, they didn't quite they care. They didn't care. So they, they, and I was. I was, but they yeah. didn't care. They didn't care. Well, did yeah. they know, no. you think? <clears throat> I must have smelled all beard up. Yeah. Come on. I smell. I would smell it now. I mean, now even if you don't smell it, they're making sure. Right. Yeah. Right? And you're pulled right. over. You're getting a test. But they, yeah, they, they, they just took us. They kept us for a while. I think they really had a good time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think that when I look back, they, they had to, they you're, really had a good time. Like I gave them the yeah. light of their lives. Yeah. Well, look, I applaud you for listening to Zeppelin, uh, kid. Yeah. But you're 17. <laughs> Yeah. Your brain grow isn't old. fully formed yet. <laughs> I would suggest that you slow down <laughs> and, grow old. and not listen to these stories of us speeding and go, I should do that too. You're not ready 
You're not ready. You got this ticket. It was a little warning from life to slow down before you run somebody over. Oh. oh. Warning from life. Right? Yeah. yeah. Learn from us. Now, I've gotten many speeding tickets. <laughs> <laughs> many. I don't think I, I ever got a speeding ticket at 17. I, I, I got in trouble for lots of stuff, but not for speeding. We. That was I just didn't have the money. I didn't have the money to pay for the speeding ticket. I didn't drive cars that went fast enough like that. However, later on... I, I got lots of speeding tickets. The story that comes to mind. Didn't you get mind, two in one day? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> so we didn't learn there? a lesson on that one. I'm That's like it. you, Heather. Like, I'm on such a run of no speeding tickets right now. Oh, you're screwed I'm, I'm now. like three years in. I'm, I'm doing so it feels well. Feels good, doesn't it? <clears throat> well, I thank Waze for that. Yeah. But primarily, I kind of know the little spots here in West L.A. where the guys sit. And, I, and I'm trying to be a good driver. I'm trying <laughs> to keep things real and not cause problems. I, I don't want to get tickets, and I don't want to endanger anybody. But I remember when I was... Writing for Letterman. <laughs> <laughs> I have someone on the show listening who doesn't like it. And they, now every show I try to work that in for them. When I was writing for Letterman. I was in Washington, D.C. for the weekend doing something and uh, probably just visiting in my Maserati by Turbo. A horrible, <laughs> horrible car, as you've heard me talk about before, that cost $2,500 every week to keep going. It was, a, it was a horrible creation. This weekend, it was kind of working, and I was driving it back. because when I first got it. <clears throat> I was late. It was Sunday afternoon. I had to get back so I could, could get a good night's sleep and get to work. And I, I was pulled over for doing about 110 or 25 or something on a highway in Washington. Yeah. And I remember the officer came up and, and he said, what are you doing? And I said, well, you, you know, I'm driving fast. I just... I just got this car, and I was kind of seeing what it could do. And I was being honest, like you. And I know right. I was going pretty fast. He goes, yeah, you're doing like one, 125, somewhere up there. And he goes, uh, wh- why are you driving so fast? I go, well, try the car out. But I, I, honestly, i got to get back for work. He goes, what are you doing? I go, I'm a writer, writer for David Letterman, Late Night with David Letterman. And he goes, no wonder no wonder that show's not funny. Yeah, he <laughs> so said he that? He said that to me, and he looks at me, and I'm like, you didn't have to fucking say that. <laughs> Suddenly I got mad. I say, you didn't have to fucking say that. And he just looked at me and walked away. And um, <laughs> But but as has happened to me before in this situation several times, before I learned my lesson not to drive this fast, he the officer was nice enough not to write me up for that speed. He would come back. I think he felt bad that he made that joke about Dave, which I didn't care about. But he said, uh, I'm going to write you up for 75 Wow, because it's your less favor. money if you. Well, if one twenty-five is reckless driving. Yeah, right, he said at one twenty-five, he like, goes, "You're done. I can take the car. I can arrest oh, you really? and crush okay. it." Now that's happened to me three times. Where they took your car? No, where they, they could have. They could have, <laughs> and they didn't. Oh well. And uh, and I, now I don't drive that one anymore. But it's always been in these really interesting spots where you know I have a knack for just going. Why don't I goose it up for just a minute, and I goose it up for the radar trap. Right. right, I goose time. it up right for the spot. Like right. the road is open in front of me. Let me just hear the engine, whoop, just nailed. And the guy goes, and 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 the, and the officer always says, "Why did you do that?" It's like an <laughs> obvious was, spot, right? Sta- no, I was standing there, and you sped up, and you went faster. And I, <laughs> Remember, I, I'm sorry. stupid. Stupid is always I, the best answer. They I didn't like that. see. No, I do. I'm very honest. I feel bad for the police officers and all the dumb excuses. But uh, now I'm now I'm I'm doing all right. And, and I suggest that you. You drive at a reasonable speed. And, uh, well, we have to let Heather go. Oh. We're going to come back. Let's take another break. Let's say goodbye to Heather. And you want to answer a few more questions sure. before Why we not? go? Heather? Thanks for having me, guys. It was so nice Thank of you, you to stop by. Yeah. Have a very nice dinner. We're all very excited about season number five of Garage Squad. Yeah, you got to check it out. Velocity Channel. Can we watch this uh, online and streamers? You can, actually. You um, you Motor it. Trend app. Okay. Motor Trend On Demand app. They have... Garage Squad on there too. So the first four episodes are on there right away. So you, people who wanted to binge watch could get that out. But we have six more coming out. So awesome. I'm very excited. Well, yeah. Thank you for being here. Let's go outside and take some pictures. We'll yes. be right back okay. with Perfect. more Spikes Car Radio. You know what? Everybody has that favorite pair of jeans. I certainly do. It's the pair that, you know, fits perfectly. It always looks great. The pair you wear out at night, at home on the couch, at work. 
wherever you're always in these jeans. They're to go to. Do not underestimate their importance, jeans. No one knows that better than Wrangler, the authority on jeans, using their expertise in comfort and durability. Wrangler jeans are made for the adventurers, the go-getters, folks who like to keep moving, whether you ride a bike, a bronc, a skateboard, or if you're the type who walks the earth in search of something, these are the jeans for you. Classic or modern styles, a range of fits at a price that works for you. Vintage re-releases, Wrangler has something for everyone. Visit Wrangler.com and check out their great selection of jeans, shirts, pants, outerwear for men and women. New styles, great fits, Wrangler. Real comfortable jeans. You're listening to Spike's Car Radio. All right, Zuckerman, it's just me and you. Little bonus content for our fans. They deserve it. We yeah. love our fans. And boy, to wow. The, the information we just got about this slant nose, I can't believe it. I'm stunned that this is still on. I thought for sure. I know you know everything, but every now and again, I know something. <laughs> you know a lot. You have an encyclopedic knowledge of many things. But this is about sources, and we've been let down by our sources occasionally, right? And then sometimes we're not. I have great confidence we, in this source. Okay. Why don't you ask him about that uh, that new GT3 Speedster and how much of that uh, concept car is going to be in the production car? I might do that. All right. He well, does work at Porsche. This guy does? Your source? Wow. Well, I, I'm not even sure I know who this guy is. Um <clears throat> Well, there are questions about your daily driver. I think we've covered that. Uh, Zuckerman, did you find your beloved partner, a GT2? Well, that actually is from my beloved partner. I have a feeling that that's my beloved partner, actually. Oh, wait. You're a trial lawyer. That is. (laughs) That is. You snuck one in. And and I am on on the job, and I am going to find him one. <laughs> Undoubtedly, he will get one. I just uh, He just wants a plane. What, what, what generation? He wants it. He, no, he wants a 991 GT2. He oh, wants the big ball the of GT2 the real RS. deal. That's right. Wow. He wants a GT2 RS, <laughs> and I'm going to find it for him. We have one that we've carved up into thirds. Maybe right. we want to add a fourth to this now, little equation. I think Nick, Nick <laughs> is going to want his own. I know, oh, I know my partner. Own. He's going to want his own. Well, that I and, think we can arrange. And I think we can. Yeah, I think th- those have started turning up. They haven't said how many they're going to make. I haven't heard that they're numbering these cars, so that means they're kind of leaving it open. And you know what he's going to want? He's going to want a black one, which is going to look great next to ours. Right. And uh, and still, I've been still I've been promised, and we saw that fellow up there from Pennsylvania who said he's going to come through. He's got only one, Mark Brenner. Well, we're going to – then let's ask him. Let's see what he, he can do. He just heard his name. He uh, last we saw him, he was on the golf course up in Monterey after one too many, and he said, "If we get another one, it's yours, Spike." Why I'd don't we call to... up Mister Sicrelli? <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll, let's send some money. Yeah. <laughs> let's send Why some money to Champion Auto Sports or whatever. Uh, <laughs> now here's a question I've heard many times, and I, I think we all know the answer to it. But let's just state it for the record: Seinfeld's wiki page says he has ten identical boxsters, except in different colors. Please, all caps, confirm or deny. Denied! Come For the on. the 10 millionth time. Yeah. But didn't that rumor come out at the time the boxers came out? That is one bonehead reporter from like a business magazine who doesn't know anything about cars that just wrote that. That makes no sense. One in every color. Oh, my God. Are there, <laughs> were there only Seinfeld's 10 Seinfeld's really colors? Liberace. <laughs> Give me one in every color. <laughs> I don't even think he has the original Boxster anymore. No. He and I both got the first two delivered, and then they both these cars are uh, both long gone. The Taproot Boxsters, we would love to track down and wow. find. And that was what, 90, what, 98? Oh, I don't remember. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, yeah 98, because I remember getting a C2S that year. Uh, could that be the same year? Yes. Boy, that was a good year. Um, how deep into Porsche is too deep, i.e. buying priceless Porsche family memorabilia? I guess he's talking about Jerry owning stuff. That's not too deep. I can't afford a GT3, namely your 991 GT3, uh, the blue car, which... Which is gone. By the way, was just sold. Congratulations. Right. Dean Maroney. Came Dean f- Maroney. He's now at Beverly Hills Porsche. We just closed the deal right before this podcast. Um, as I made the last little initial on the form, I felt sad, Zuckerman. I, I felt a pa- I felt the pangs, you know, <laughs> the sales pangs. That car was a, was more like a person. That car had personality. That car stood above other GT3s. It was gorgeous. Well, we had it for three and a half years. I've uh, had right. my way with it. I love it. The new owner's got a great car with a great history. The ownership history goes Seinfeld, Ferriston, and now this person, whoever wow. that is. And um, 
If he wants me to write that down so he can have that and put it in a frame, I'd be happy to verify that so that moving forward in history, in car history, that car is... And I'd be happy to sign both of your names on the hood. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and we and everybody always says, but did you fix the rattling seat? Yes, of course I fixed With the boogers. rattling seat. I Sticky did. boogers. You know what I found, though, as we were going through the car to make sure to get it ready for sale? There was a nail in the tire. Really? Yeah, I'd been driving it with a nail in the tire. All that construction in Yeah, it makes me crazy on GT3s when you get a flat, because sometimes, as you know, you can't get that car onto the flatbed. Right. Right? Even with the lift kit, it gets tricky. <clears throat> All right. This guy, uh, he's saying it won't replace my daily. What is he saying? But I'm getting closer to being able to fund a 991. That's the new Porsche. It won't be able, it won't replace my daily, so I want a manual. Give me your opinion on the C4S versus the CS. In addition, do you think the Targa 4S would be a better investment mm. than the C4S? Okay, yeah. first of all, production cars are not investments. None of these cars are investments. Unless, of course, you have a paint-to-sample car, then maybe, maybe. You'll hold value as opposed to yes. making an investment. I'd actually – I would say to this guy, save a little bit of money and get a 997 with a stick. I think that that's a pure car. Sure. Yeah, and, you know, why not? I mean, here's a simpler way of thinking of it that I use. When you're thinking about 4Ss, you're thinking about weather. Do you have weather? Then you need all-wheel drive. Otherwise, you're in California. Otherwise, what is it? It's just an extra letter and number on the car. Yeah, forget it. It doesn't matter. These are all lateral moves. You just have to figure out where you live, and if you don't have rain, then just get a regular C2. You know, I happen to see today a, a, a silver, GT Silver 997.2 GT3 with 4,000 miles on it for $125,000. That <laughs> would be, if you can drive that car, that's mm-hmm. a better long-term purchase than a, a 991 4S. Yeah, and and just know this, folks. Unless you're talking about um, a, a small number batches, think of it that way. Cars where maybe they just made from, I don't know, 500 to 2,000, you're not really buying something that can be collectible. That you're 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 buying what's a product called a production car, and that's just something you're going to drive, and maybe you'll get most of your money out of it, but maybe you won't. So don't think of that as a collectible, right? In be, general, it only becomes a used car. It only becomes a used car, right? So there you go. About a year ago or two, you made a post about Nezumi Voiture watches. I remember that. I like that company. I quite liked it and ended up buying one. Do you still wear it or any other low cost watches? The answer is yes. I still have that watch. I love it. I like what the company's about. You can check them out on Instagram. And uh, I'm a big fan of anybody who makes a cool watch at a uh, at an affordable price point. Do you know what Nezumi means in a foreign language? Um, no, it's in Japanese. It means rat. <laughs> It does. I swear to God. I did not know that. Yes. I talked to their, uh, the guy who's running that operation all the time. He's a passionate watchmaker with a, with a flair for the automotive style. A uh, couple questions. Can I buy a 986 and drive the wheels off it as long as it's maintained? Uh, I'll say yes. And how does Zuckerman achieve the perfect evil lovable character ratio? <laughs> Is it the money? And it's a good question. I think what he's trying to say with his limited vocabulary is, <laughs> why are you the way you are? Like, if you did not have all your money and success, do you think you would be doing evil in the world, Zuckerman? That's a real. You know me better than me in a way. You would answer. You'd be able to answer this better because I think that there is an aspect of me. I do delight in things like learning that Frank Fay, the father stand up, was a horrible human being. I, I do. You're have, referencing the Wayne Fetterman show, right? Yes, and I and I like a certain. Yes. I like a certain degree of perversity out there, and I like that, and that, Screlly, this Sucrelli, this right, guy. He's right, entertaining but Jack, to you. But myself, I think I have a good heart underneath all the crust. You do. You do. But I think it's your success and uh, your. Or a law firm that keeps you from being a, a criminal out in the world. <laughs> <laughs> that if you didn't have that, and it weren't po- that you couldn't lose that, that you might be out there uh, oh, driving I, people off the road in it, your career, in, GT. In past years, the answer <laughs> to that is yes. I've evolved. I think this is that was asked with peace and love. I think they're all just well, fans I, of you. I just no, I don't. I'm not offended. Um, do you ever autocross? I want to get into that next. You break. did that. Did I? Didn't you? Where did that? I do it? Didn't you take kart racing and stuff? Yeah, I did in, in, in uh, go-karts. I like that stuff. I like the racetrack a little better. Uh, the autocross, that's the orange pylons, and you're driving in your car with a bunch of guys in cargo shorts. That's cool, too. It's, it's all good. Anything that helps you to become a better driver is a good thing. 
<clears throat> Take me through the research process on cars you guys plan to buy. I'm curious if forums are a good place to start or otherwise. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. But, I mean, getting right to the point, usually we have someone uh, vet these cars. And we vet them in all shape and form. History, matching numbers. Um, we like to see service records, what's happened to the car. Um, our theory, I think, and correct me if I'm wrong, Zuckerman, is you can find a great car anywhere, even with a schmucky guy. That's right? true. Right? It's vet the car, not the dealer. There you go. Um, paint to sample. Is Porsche still doing it? Didn't we just ask Dean this on the way and in? And what did he tell you? He said, and correct me if I'm wrong, paint to sample is available on the regular 911s, on the regular Cayennes and the Macans, right? And just not the GT3s the or the <laughs> RSs, which is, <laughs> seems insane. And they said, he said it might be coming back in March of 2019. But why, why would they let you get it on a regular 911 and 911S, <laughs> and, 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 but then you want a GT3 and they say no? But, you know, when we were talking about your new Adriatic uh, GT2, you're new to you, this Jerry's old car that you bought from Ray J, we were noticing that that was one of three paint to sample right. made. In that's it. Not in Adriatic blue, just one of three paint to sample cars. And that's what I was trying to get at when I was saying paint to sample seems like it's over and done with at this point. Well, right? It, the minute because anything back then becomes. Then it was two or three cars were paint to sample. Right. right? You had to have connections. And uh, now it's just what color do you want? We have regular colors and then <laughs> yeah. some more. Art. Now there's a thousand paint to sample <laughs> right. cars. Which is just more choices. Yeah. And that to me diminishes the value of those cars. Uh, please stop answering which affordable Porsche should I buy question. <laughs> okay. I will do that. I'm never going to. Did you see my favorite question? Huh? Did you see my favorite question? What was that? A guy says, if I bring a pallet of sex diapers to the dealership, <laughs> can I get a Porsche? Now, you know, uh, somewhere along the line on my Instagram story, I posted a picture of a Depends diaper cover, right? I was at the pharmacy sex waiting diapers. to pick up a prescription for my son. And I looked on over to the side. They had the Depends diaper, and there was kind of a handsome guy wearing a diaper in kind of a but, J. But wait, wait. In a J. Crew modeling shot. And I took a picture, and I sent it to you, and then I posted it on Instagram in my story. And right away... A guy wrote, I'm the guy who <laughs> took that picture, and I, my company did it. Now I'm embarrassed. And I Why said, would you be embarrassed? Yeah, don't. I said it this to you. This is fantastic. Said, don't be embarrassed. This is. I think we should set up a phone call with this guy and yes. talk to him about this. Sex diaper guy, please. We need to get in touch with you. Because those, those were not normal, like, Huggies depends. These were high fashion. <laughs> Depends. They yes. looked, they were they, they were colored. They looked more like briefs. <laughs> you could you could maybe fool someone a hundred years old into thinking. They weren't. Now, now to be clear, these were not sex diapers. What they had done is they said, "Hey, why don't we take a J Crew brief and and match it up with a Depends, <laughs> and then put a handsome sailor guy on there?" And that's what they were doing. They were kind of making these things fashionable. Now I've noticed that these ads have migrated to MSNBC and CNN too. Have you seen these at night? There's oh, just God, it's Handsome guys walking around in, in these diapers. But most importantly, Zuckerman, there's no sex diaper yet. Well, they haven't invented this. Yeah, because, if you, you know, like, because after, the sex di after these diaper commercials comes the catheter commercials. And if you're not wearing a catheter, you're still in the game. You're still in the game. And so our producer, our new producer, is very confused at the conversation. This has to do with Sumner Redstone. The, uh, the the old, old man who runs and owns Viacom and amusements and whatever that and other company is. he was in his is. 90s. He's still in his 90s, and he seems to be... Uh, Randy as ever, the old Randy goat. as ever. <laughs> <laughs> but we're guessing he's also uh, in, incontinent. And and so so we, we, we I don't know, did we, we guess that he was wearing a sex diaper? Did we well, I, suggest I, he would wear the special diaper that would catch I his... I said to you, what kind of diaper do you wear <laughs> when you want to get... When you want to get down with the girls, that you said, well, a sex diaper, of course. <laughs> now, that's what, you know, every good business starts by solving a problem. And in that right. podcast, you and I solved a problem right there. Yes. For, for the old folks who are feeling Randy, the <laughs> sex diaper, the fashionable sex diaper. So if you are that, that Randy old goat, <laughs> that fan who is listening to us in England, who designed uh, the cover art for the Depends, the new Depends, uh, get in touch with us. We've got some seed money. <laughs> and, uh, you know, we'll get Moise, who started Splendid involved. And he just started a new underwear line. He's got a new underwear line. That's right. Now, because that's case in point of solving a problem. He noticed that women were wearing these Lululemon yoga pants without any underwear. And he said, why don't I make some underwear for them that fits in, but you can't see the lines? 
and he and it's making money all over right. the place. Right. It's just some special miracle fabric that does everything so I, you would want it to do if you were that girl. So I would say let's find a sex diaper <laughs> miracle fabric <laughs> <laughs> and let's do that. No diaper lines. No diaper lines. No diaper lines. Nobody knows. Right. Nobody knows. You're, you're going you're number a, two, you're and you're swinging, having sex in the same moment. You're swinging pee boy. <laughs> <laughs> look what you've done to me in my podcast, Zuckerman. You've, look at what you have me talking about. All right, a couple more questions. Boy, lots of people really want to know about this scam, but we already covered that. We covered the GT3 Turing. Your quick advice to first-year law student, how to find motivation before the money. That's a good Dude, question. Get yeah. on that mic, Zuckerman. Don't lean off it. Stay on it. Well, you know what I'm going to say? I... I didn't have motivation in law school, and I and I hated my job for the first couple of few years. And then I decided, and then it struck me one day that, you know what, I'm pretty good at this. I actually kind of like this. I should put on a new pair of glasses and get busy working. And all of a sudden, right at the age of 30, I had an incredible hunger, and I wanted to succeed. It wasn't like that before then. But so, so the kid shouldn't worry about it. He should really just worry about learning, getting a good summer job, getting his law degree, and then, and then he can get busy. Good advice. Um, people want to know when we're getting merchandise. I heard from Norm, who runs Podcast One, that there is a line of merchandise coming for this podcast. I've yet to uh, advise him on what I'd like that to be. I think he <laughs> has an idea of what he wants it to be. So, uh, the Norm Pattis gold rings and, and twirly gun. No, it sounded like it was all racing themed, um, but I'm excited about that. But but we'll, we'll add to it, and I think there'll be some cool stuff. I'd like to see basic just kind of SCR hats, the you know, bit, little logos and, and cool stuff. I don't maybe, like to wear stuff that, that advertises somebody else's stuff. Maybe, I like it to look kind of cool. There's a different series of hats that have a little thing like, Hashtag taproot. Hashtag more yeah, salad. Exactly. Hashtag sex the money. diaper. The money. And you and so hashtag sex diaper. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And and it, you know, and people ask a question, but they also have something nice to uh, wear. Um all right. Hey, we got to this question. I'm still going here. I'm staying with you folks. Go. I know you don't want us to stop here. We've got uh, thirteen minutes left, Zuckerman. Go. All right. As I before the show I mentioned. You often mention the 58 Speedster specifically. Why is that particular year model more desirable than early years? What are the key things to look for to make sure I am getting a real Porsche and not a replica or a pieced together car? This is Trent Lewis, who I believe direct messaged me and said uh, he's going to buy one. He's in the market for this car. Okay. So this is good. Here's a guy who, who's uh, looking at the right stuff, right? Tell us, uh, first of all, Zuckerman. Why the 58? Well, you taught me this. The The Speedster was built between 1954 and 1958. And the first year was a, was a pre-A. It was a very rudimentary car. And then, then there was the A. But, but really, at this time, Porsche was learning as exactly. they went along. And each year, even in the, in the years during the year, the cars got better and better. Right. And 58 was the best and final year. That's just true of Porsche in general, basically, yeah. right? At the end of the line, when they've learned every year, they're getting better and better and improving and making it better. So when you get to the end, the 89 is another great year for 911s, right? 98, the last of the air cooled. Those are the cars that we want. Right. You know, it, it, the difference between a 57 and the 58, I don't know if you'd ever feel it. But if you if you can find the 58, that's the one you want to get. Now, the basics, I think that you may be asking, that I think the rest of us all know, an original color. Original paint is really the high bar, but you probably won't find that. But let's just say the original color, if you can find the original engine, the original drivetrain, that's good. And uh, original, and then you try to get into original <clears throat> panels, original floors, yes, original battery box, that kind of stuff is just is is the icing on the cake. And a lot of these cars have been raced and banished. and beaten. My Speedster, my '58, which was originally a white car with black interior, the original engine wasn't with it, and when we took it down to the bare metal, it had tons of Bondo in it. I love that car. Right. So I don't know how much of that matters. I guess mm. what what I would then look at is if budget is a consideration, just look at who did this work. And whatever whatever condition this car comes into, where did it come from? Because uh, remember, that's the story you'll be selling on the way out. So you, if there are any suspicious names, <laughs> and we which won't we will get say into that, privately, <laughs> which we will, you can ask us about privately. Um, 
you might want to avoid those. But um, and then the, the, but the who thing- do we who do we now 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 you know it's easy for us. We we know a lot of folks who can do this pre-purchase inspection, right? Depends on the part step. of the country. And, so, and and think about what Jerry just did. He he bought a, a, a car, right? This in w- Europe. white and blue car. But he got somebody to do a PPI there that did the most beautiful report. Wow. Cobus Contrain. No, it wasn't Cobus. It was was it Cobus? It was someone else. I don't remember. But but he, he looked at a couple of cars and one did It was check educational. Out. It was and, great. Yeah. And you would I'm telling you, you would have looked at both of these cars, the photographs and gone, they're both beautiful. They're both cars that we should buy. And then you look at the report, and one was a car you pass on, and the other was a car you needed to have. And uh, that's what that PPI does. It, uh, it, it, it evaporates the illusion, the romance of you looking at pictures, and, and it, it gets down to the, the, the facts. The facts of the matter are this. And, uh, you know, you just uh, – I don't know who you would go to. Well, to, again, it depends on the part of the country. Not do that. No, you, you – if he, if he locates one and he – any messages either one of us we can say we can reach out and figure out depending on where it is who can do a good job and then after you buy it it's important that you work on the suspension the, uh, the suspension is the biggest part of ha- of enjoying <clears throat> these cars wouldn't you yeah. agree yeah no you, there's you, a lot the drum brakes yeah. i mean they're not really strong so you want to make sure those are good i i like to preserve as much of the original right. car as possible so it drives the like the original car but as you know i have a hot rodded engine something i never thought i would cotton to and i love it I love it. 150 horsepower. Will Hoyt. But with everything else feeling like the original. Anyway, we are out of time. We've spent a lot of time with you folks today, so you cannot complain that the show was too short. Uh, We love you. We will see you next week on Spike's Car Radio. Thank you, Ferrison. Thanks for listening to Spike's Car Radio. Download new episodes every Wednesday on the Podcast One app or subscribe now at Apple Podcasts or PodcastOne.com. Hey, this is Jordan Harbinger. I used to host the Art of Charm podcast, but now it's time for something new. The Jordan Harbinger Show. Did you know you can be entertained and actually get a boost in your life at the same time? On this show, we dig into the superpowers of the world's most interesting thinkers and top talents. Then we deliver them to you right into your ears. But I get it. We're not all superheroes. That's why we give you their blueprint so you can live what you listen. After a thousand interviews, learning five languages, and getting arrested in a country that doesn't even exist anymore, I'm now more ready than ever to introduce you to The Jordan Harbinger Show. Listen free to The Jordan Harbinger Show, available on Apple Podcasts, PodcastOne.com, and the Podcast One app. Hey guys, time to get in on the action for the biggest moments in basketball with Prize Picks, America's number one fantasy sports app. Just select two or more players, pick more or less on their projections, place your entry, and win up to 100 times your money. Right now, Prize Picks will match your first deposit of up to $100. Just download the Prize Picks app and use the code GET100. That's code GET100 on Prize Picks for a first deposit match of up to $100. Prize Picks, pick more, pick less. It's that easy. You love podcasts, the stories, the laughs, the unexpected turns. But when this episode ends, the silence starts. Not anymore. Audiobooks.com turns that silence into your next great adventure. With over 450,000 titles, from bestsellers to hidden gems, your love for listening just found its new best friend. And because you already know the joy of audio, we're giving you three free audiobooks to start your journey. Imagine your favorite podcast, now with unlimited episodes. That's audiobooks.com. Keep the story going. Sign up for your free trial at audiobooks.com slash podcast free today. Because for podcast lovers like you, the end of an episode is just the beginning. That's audiobooks.com slash podcast F-R-E-E.